like using the word hailing to describe somebody being from somewhere. It's just so extra, you know? So unnecessarily visceral. I wish I had a better word. Hailing from Australia, Hatchie's been in a few bands here and there, Baba Ganoush and Go Violets, but on her own she's found enough potential to rock up just casually with one of the best dream pop records of the year. This came out a while ago, but only now am I starting to feel the bliss. The record is so good at being dream pop that she didn't even rock up, rather she wafted into the air on a flying carpet. That's another word I don't like using. Wafted. There are oodles of bands you could compare Hatchie's music to, and I wouldn't deny the fact that a few of them might have influenced her either, considering the internet's classic maths formula of drag and drop artists to see what they result in. Am I allowed to do it? Am I allowed to say Cranberries and Cocteau Twins? Anyways, my observation is that right now Hatchie's approach to Dream Pop isn't really being that, uh, ap approached. I mean, the sound is tried and true, but I just don't know if it's been executed this well this recently. Not just in its very blissful songwriting, but the sound design on this thing. It's, it's abyssal and almost misty, like glaring at a romantic scene through walls of tear-smudged eyes, like I tend to do. There's just an atmosphere here that reminds me of daydreaming sequences in teen romance flicks, which I usually hate, actually. I usually think they're quite stupid. And it's not even like I should because they're so common, so why do I hate it? Am I am I becoming Paul Joseph Watson? But Hatchie's versions of these sort of daydream sequences feel so much more down to earth despite their pretty straightforward lyrical concepts. But to be honest, I didn't really step into an EP with this particular sound and aesthetic expecting a five part romantic tragedy in E minor. Hatchie's music is only here to achieve what it needs to, and that's delivering dream pop songs that are so honest about how fucking in love with you they are. Like holy shit, it says, I'm so fucking smitten. Ah! From the moment Shaw began the EP, I got so lost in its thickly layered guitar intro that I honestly just forgot where I was for a second. Maybe it's a song asking for assurance, but the effect it had on me was untangling me even more, buddy. Then on the track Sleep, when Hatchy hits consecutive high notes on one of the verses. <laughs> just feel this release, this catharsis, a bit similar to hearing the first lines of I can see clearly now the rain has gone, or the same feeling as diving to touch the bottom of the pool with your finger and then doing a little flip and then resurfing with one heavy breath and splash. Was I the only one who did that? Definitely not, I've seen you do it, don't lie! And the vocal harmonies on the title track's chorus are as convinced as ink outlines on a trail to draw a cherry blossom tree. It's, a, it's beautiful stuff really. Ironically for practicing a sound that is so tried and true, Hatchie's EP is somehow just something completely special. This EP is just one massive explosion of affection. Sure, it seems to be suspended in this air, a mix of euphoria and very despondent heartbreak, but every single vocal performance is such a powerful emotion, it's like she is feeling every love-painted note on this album, be it on guitar or when she's singing. It's as passionate as my rating of a very smitten strong 8 to a light 9. And if you've known about it for a while but have been putting it off because you're not really a fan of the aesthetic or you think it might be too sugary or you're not really a fan of love songs, then don't be silly, give it a go.